St. Paul tells the Romans in our second reading today that we should offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. And Jesus says to his followers in today's gospel, whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. I made a prayer in early 2019 that if there was anything I could suffer for the victims of Catholic clergy sexual abuse and assault, I would do that willingly. A month later, I had my first seizure. From what I later learned, about two years after that was actually a brain tumor. And I knew as soon as the words came out of the doctor's mouth that I had a brain tumor, that that brain tumor had been an answer to that prayer I had made two years prior. And so after receiving my diagnosis, I wrote up a blog post that night about how I had been diagnosed with a brain tumor and that I was offering that suffering up for all of the victims of Catholic clergy abuse. And that blog post went viral. Since my first surgery was not for another month, that gave me the opportunity to communicate with about 170 victim survivors of Catholic clergy abuse, parents of victims, and parents of victims who had taken their life because of the abuse that they had suffered through the hands of Catholic clergy. And so I entered my first of three brain surgeries in March of 2020 with 170 names of victim survivors and victims who had committed suicide because of the abuse. I told all of them in, in that month when I was communicating with them that I didn't expect my offering up of my suffering for them to suddenly help them return to the Catholic Church. But some of them, several years after, reached out and said that my offering of my suffering up for them allowed them to come back. Why do I mention all of this? Because the Bible says over and over and over again in our reading from St. Paul this morning, in Jesus and our gospel today, we hear over and over and over again a teaching that I don't hear coming from any other place besides the Catholic Church. And that teaching is that our suffering, any suffering that we ever experience, can be offered up for other people and also for ourselves. And that that suffering bears real fruit in the person's life who we are offering up suffering for, and it also bears tremendous fruit in our own lives as well. Mother Angelica has this beautiful phrase, never let a drop of your suffering go to waste. My heart aches when I hear people say that they think their suffering is meaningless, whether it's Catholics or non-Catholics. Most of us a lot of us think that our suffering is meaningless. And that narrative is out there a lot in our world today, but it is simply not true. Our suffering has an infinite weight to it. Just as Christ's suffering won for us our salvation, so our suffering in some small way, in imitation of Christ, when offered up for other people, and ourselves has dramatic effects in their lives and in ours as well. I have since recognized and realized that the greatest person that was helped by my offering of my sufferings up for the victims, the greatest person that benefited from that was me. It got me to step away, to look and examine at my, my priesthood, and it made me an infinitely better priest. I was a lot of times really sarcastic and bitter in some ways. And I've come out of that with a much more profound understanding and a much more profound sense of peace. What does this offering up of our suffering for other people and ourselves look like practically? It might look like saying, Lord, I offer this small inconvenience that I am experiencing for other people. Or, Lord, I am offering the suffering that I am experiencing from strife in my family for that person causing 
that strife. Or it can be bigger things. Lord, I offer up the suffering of this cancer and chemo for other people. I invite you all to try it with big and small sufferings in your life. God always keeps his word because he loves us. See if offering up your sufferings for yourself and others does in fact make you more peaceful and calm today in this life. We all know people who need to hear these things about our suffering not being meaningless, but something that we can offer up for others. I invite you to invite other people in your life who you know who need to hear this and other beautiful teachings that I only hear coming from the Catholic Church. Invite those people to come and learn more about Catholicism. I'm teaching a class at St. Martin's campus. I've taught this RCIA class 23 times and I've always learned something every time I teach it. So I know that everyone here will also learn something if they come. I invite you to come. And I invite you to invite other people to come. Maybe they're already Catholic. Maybe they're not Catholic. It's not necessarily just for people who want to come into the church. The, the RCI class is only required for anybody who has never received baptism at all. But I think, again, as I learn, every, as I learn from every time I teach this class, I think all of us here need to, if possible, come as often as, as we can and also invite other people who you know need to hear these things. Inviting a person to come learn more about Catholicism and what the Catholic Church teaches also has the benefit of being something that for most of us, we are massively fearful of doing, including myself. I'm massively fearful of inviting other people to come learn more about the Catholic Church, even though I'm a priest. So again, that is another thing that we can be offering up for others. Maybe offer that suffering up, that fear of inviting a non-Catholic or a Catholic to come and learn more about Catholicism, offer that up for that person that you are inviting. Classes again start on September 14th at 6.30 p.m. at St. Martin's Campus Hall. The first class will be, Why Be Catholic? Let us all heed St. Paul's command today and offer ourselves up as a sacrifice in both big and small ways, may we make that a constant habit in our lives moving forward. Mm -hmm.